there! I'm here today to bring you the first part of my January wrap-up. That's right. I have done enough reading this month to warrant two wrap-ups, which is exciting. So far, at least. You never know how it's going to go from here. But I have discovered the art of audiobooks. Now, obviously, I have been listening to audiobooks over the past year. And I've sort of been listening to them while I'm walking and things like that. But because I don't often get the chance to listen to them, I was listening to them really slowly. However, I have now discovered that I can't listen to audiobooks while I'm working, but while I'm editing, and I mean, I do 10, 10 articles a day, basically, and about 15 to 20 minutes of each article is editing. So when I get to the editing stage, I stick on an audiobook, and I have been whizzing through the audiobooks. So we're going to get straight into it. The first audiobook I listened to was the actual one by Izzy Sooty. Um, she's a British comedian who was in a quite big show over here called Peep Show, um, and this is her journey about... I felt like it was a bit false advertising, because... The way that it was described was that she's in her late 20s and she's sort of trying to accept the fact that she's not young anymore and trying to sort of accept the fact that her friends are getting married and having babies and actually what it was more about was the, f the quest for love basically which kind of eh, it wasn't really what I was after um, I think too often there's just this pressure on love and the idea of love and the quest for it and finding the one I should have known from the title the actual one that she's looking for the one basically um, and it does have some funny anecdotes about her friends having babies and her feeling of despair about how she's getting older but for the most part it's about her relationships and sort of how they went wrong and what she thinks is going to happen in the future um, it was enjoyable and I certainly enjoyed listening to the audiobook because there's sort of little snippets, certainly there's a bit at the start where she <laughs> explains that in the book there's a lot of French words but she can't pronounce French words so they've been replaced in the audiobook and it really made me laugh. Um, there's also pictures that she's drawn in the um, physical copy of the book so she describes those in the audiobook and is quite funny with her descriptions. Um, I, I really enjoyed those additives. I would say if I'd read this I wouldn't have enjoyed it as much. I enjoyed listening to her read it though and I think if you know who she is you would probably enjoy this certainly if you're at sort of the age I am where you're reaching your late 20s now and feeling a bit lost and feeling like all your friends are overtaking you I wouldn't say if you if you don't know who she is I wouldn't necessarily say you would enjoy this though equally if you are in your late 20s it might appeal to you anyway because it's not particularly about her career or who she is as a person it's just about her general exploits so it was enjoyable I gave it three stars I then read Patti Smith's M Train those of you who have been here a while will know that Just Kids by Patti Smith is one of my all-time favorite books I adore it I try and read it every year because it is just life itself I've been waiting to get M Train for so so long but when it came out I didn't have a job so I didn't have any money to get it and it was quite expensive because it was in hardback then I had a job and couldn't find it anywhere finally found it and it was in a matching edition to my just kids which was very satisfying um I was disappointed but I kind of set myself up for disappointment. I, I did hear a lot of people say that this is very different to Just Kids and you shouldn't go into it expecting it to be like Just Kids but I still went into it expecting it to be a bit like Just Kids and it, it really isn't. It basically looks at, it looks at her loss of her husband but not particularly. It looks at the period of her life after her husband has passed and her day-to-day -day living and how she survives and fills her time and writes and finds muse and takes pictures and things like that. I think the best way to describe it is that Just Kids is like this vibrant, full of life, exciting novel that makes you have this lust for life and this passion for creation. This is a really slow, meandering read and it, it it's good, it's really good for what it is because if you think about it, it's really clever what she's done, that she's had these two novels <clears throat> that are at different ends of her life, so Just Kids was when she was just starting out and she was full of excitement and passion and in this one, life has kind of got her down and the years have got on top of her, she's in her 60s I think when, she, when she's writing this. Um, and it is clever and it is gentle and it's a really comforting blanket read. But at the same time, I felt like there were some things in here that didn't really work. There wasn't much of a narrative. Um, it is just literally her meandering about in coffee shops predominantly um, and trying to write and not really being able to write. So it's literally just her bobbing about, really. 
Um, I wasn't, I wasn't blown away by this. I would say probably I enjoyed it a little bit more than I would have because I loved Just Kids so much. So I have this affinity for Patti Smith. I wouldn't say that this is for everybody. I would say if you enjoy Just Kids, give it a go. But if not, probably just stick with Just Kids. Definitely for the time being anyway. Then I finished another audiobook, which is It's Okay, I'm Wearing Really Big Knickers by Louise Renison. I believe this has now been renamed because when I went on Goodreads, it was under a different name, but I can't remember what that name was. Basically, it's the second in the Georgia series. It's the one after Angus Thongs and Full Frontal Snogging. I listened to Angus Thongs and Full Frontal Snogging last year when Louise Renison passed because I've never actually experienced these books, which is strange because they are exactly the kind of books that I would have enjoyed as a teenager. But I think I kind of, whether they came out when I was a bit too old to enjoy them or whether I didn't become aware of them until I was a bit too old to enjoy them, I think the film certainly, I know, came out when I was about 18, so I was kind of past the point of being intrigued. I, I watched the film. It was sort of aimed at a younger demographic from me, so I wasn't blown away and I, I didn't rush out to read the books. But listening to these on audio is absolutely fantastic. They make me laugh the whole time. I, I just, I love them. It's basically this teenage girl's diary. She's 14 years old and she's called Georgia. And she's quite an interesting character because... She's so utterly selfish and unpleasant in most ways, but she's completely unself-aware, so there's this sort of endearing quality about her where she just doesn't realise, and I think it perfectly encapsulates the teenage years and the fact that, you know, it is all about you, and you think that everyone else is so selfish and rude, and actually you're the one that's, you know, a bit of an idiot. But she's hilarious and some of the entries are fantastic. It predominantly follows her quest for SG or sex god, um, who is an older man who ends up... This is the only thing I do find a bit strange about it. It's a 17-year-old man. He's in a band. He's quite hunky. And he ends up picking Georgia, a 14-year-old girl, and they sort of have flirtation. And I won't tell you what happens there, but it's basically about her quest to have a relationship with Sex God. I would definitely recommend it. I would definitely recommend listening to these on audio. They're not very long. This one was only like four and a half hours, but they're read by Louise Renison herself, and her voice for a whiny teenager is just hilarious. Anyway, then I read So Many Ways to Begin by John McGregor. <sighs> Everyone who has been here a while will know that If Nobody Speaks of Remarkable Things is probably my all-time favourite book and blew me away last year. I saved this to read in January this year because I wanted to start on good footing. I'm not going to say it's a bad book, it's a good book, it's still well written, it's still John McGregor's beautiful, beautiful use of language. I wouldn't say that I was blown away by this and I was quite disappointed. Again, I think like with Just Kids, I went into it expecting too much and expecting it to be more like if nobody speaks remarkable things than it was. Um, I would say, actually, funnily enough, this is probably John McGregor's most accessible book that I've read. If nobody speaks of remarkable things, it's very experimental. It doesn't have a plot, per se, and it's kind of very meandering, and I, I don't think many people enjoy it, but I loved it. This is more plot-driven and more focused, and I think people would probably get along with it better. This follows a man called David who works in a museum, looks at his life in sort of artefacts. So each chapter is a certain artefact from either his life or the museum, and the chapter coincides with that. The predominant plot is basically that his mother was a woman working in a house and she ended up being molested by the boss and having to give her baby away. And she intended to go back for him, but she never did. So he's been raised in a completely different family, and it's not until he's 22 that he realises this, and it's sort of how he deals with that and his quest for finding his mum. That's the bit that I didn't like. I didn't think it needed it. I think it was in there purely to make it more accessible. I think it was a just thrown together plot to try and sort of string the story together and I really really don't think it needed it because the story itself was beautiful so also alongside that we look at David's life his dissatisfaction with his life um his flirtations with other women his wife Eleanor has severe social anxiety she stops going out the house and it's very hard for him and also their relationship struggles and it's sort of about how they deal with each other and how he copes with the situation of kind of not getting that much affection from her because she's so caught up in her own head. Scarily enough, 
Eleanor reminded me a lot of myself, so that, that's something that I probably need to work on. But it reminded me a little bit of something like Revolutionary Road by Richard Yates, where it's just this pure dissatisfaction, just the disillusion with life. Um, I really liked that theme, and I also liked in here the fact that, as the title suggests, it sort of looks at how things start and how they could go differently. Um, so when he meets Eleanor, it's sort of like, if he hadn't walked past that room at that particular time, he would never have met her. If he hadn't gone in there and he didn't even know why he had gone in there, he wouldn't have met her. And it sort of looks at the the way that some things are just kind of strangely meant to be. Um, that I really liked. And there was potential in this. But the thing with his mum, I just, I kind of just didn't think it needed to be there. I think it, it cheapened the plot a little bit and I just, yeah, didn't didn't love. Then I listened to another audiobook which I actually have a physical copy of as well which was The Rosie Project by Graham Simpson. I've had this on my shelf for a very long time and I've been meaning to get to it for a very long time but it's one of those books I kind of bought on a whim because I kind of thought it sounded quite cute and just yeah it just didn't grab me to pick up. I've also got the second in the series so I'm very glad I managed to pick this up on audio and I thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed this. I would say I don't know that I would have enjoyed it as much if I had read it, I think it would have been a three star for me. It would have been okay, but not amazing. But the audiobook, I really enjoyed the experience of listening to it. It was really easy to follow and it had me chuckling away and I gave it four stars in the end. So this is about a man called Don who suffers from Asperger's and it's basically he's on a quest to get a wife and because of how his brain works and how he's very practical he decides to go about it by having a wife project so he comes up with a questionnaire and he gets loads of women to answer this questionnaire and he judges their suitability on their answers and as you can expect it, it kind of looks at the fact that you can try and put your partners in a box and say this is the perfect person for me but actually you're always going to be surprised that somebody who looks perfect on paper might not be perfect in reality whereas somebody who is your worst nightmare could end up being the one that you fall for. The only thing I would say with this book is that I felt at times it kind of poked fun at Don and uh, it's difficult because it was hilarious and I was laughing and I'm socially awkward so a lot of the things he does and a lot of the ways he talks about his social awkwardness had me in stitches. <laughs> He's a hilarious, hilarious narrator and I think he is done really well but the problem was that a lot of the time you are laughing at him rather than with him and obviously it's not a funny subject but it, it's still well done and I would say it was really really sweet and again it sort of looks at the idea of fate and it 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 just gripped me. I would definitely recommend listening to the audio book. There's just something about hearing the narration read out loud that was just laugh out loud funny. I, I, I enjoyed it. I, I will be getting to the second one now which is exciting. Then I also picked up, this was my short story collection and my library pick for the month just a tiny little collection. It's the BBC National Short Story Award 2013. I picked this up when I was in the library last because it had a short story from Lionel Shriver and Lucy Wood in it. I've had it out for a very long time now and haven't been getting around to it. I just haven't had the passion to get to it. But I am so, so glad I did. This is the best thing I have read so far this year. It was absolutely phenomenal. Um, there's two writers in here that I hadn't heard of before, Lisa Blower and Lavinia Greenlaw. Their stories were absolutely phenomenal. I was blown away by the writing. Um, Lionel Shriver's story, which is the main one I was looking forward to, was actually probably the weakest in the collection for me. But it was still very, very good. And also Lucy Wood, who I've been meaning to get to for a while. Her story was really good, so I'll definitely be getting to her as well. I gave this five stars. I don't know how you would purchase it or if you can purchase it anymore. But if you do come across one of these BBC Short Story Award collections, I would definitely recommend it because the stories were on point. So that is my reading for the first part of January. This video is very long. I am sorry. I will try and cut it down in editing because it's only the first part of my wrap up. So I will see you next time and I hope all your readings going well. Bye.